Okay, so I'm here at work, and it looks like a fire just started right over there. I'll see you here in a little while, or at least by the time I go home, whether or not that was plasma fire. And it just seems to have started. That's the lake over there. There's a reservoir, Jordanell Reservoir over there. So it's hard to imagine someone's just clearing off some brush. It's either a house fire, a, a structural fire, or a plasma fire. We'll see. So there's the fire over there. It just started within five minutes. And just so you know, you see all that snow? All that snow? As much as I've been hearing extreme weather, fire warning danger. There's no way there should be fires. No, there wasn't a lightning strike that hit. No, there wasn't someone that threw a cigarette butt. No, it wasn't an electrical shortage or any of the other excuses they give you. So I was imagining a new viewer tuning into one of my recent videos where I'm chastising the fire chief who in New York, in Central Park, one of the firefighters said, yeah, the captain, the chief said that someone told him that they saw someone starting fires. And I'm sitting there saying, even if someone did tell him that, he's not that fucking stupid. Average person who tunes into this channel for the first time goes, wow, this conspiracy theorist tinfoil hatter is really so fucking full of himself. He thinks he's educating the firemen on fires and that the captain's in on it on some sort of diabolical cover up. Well, that's because you just haven't been paying attention long enough. But the average person, to the average person, it would come across as arrogance and hubris and delusions of self-grandeur to think that I know more about what's going on here than anyone else and that the fire captain's in on it and he's part of some cover-up to keep shit secret. The average person that tunes in will write that guy off as a delusional, paranoid conspiracy theorist. When the facts are the facts. And people that have been watching long enough know damn well that the firemen are in on the cover up, that I know more than anyone else about this conversational subject, or at least more than anyone else who's willing to talk about it. So it's now been about 15 minutes. The fire doesn't seem to be spreading. Hold on, he's gonna jerk me out a little bit. But whatever the source is of fuel, it doesn't seem to be ending. Whatever that is that's burning, it doesn't increase and then decrease. It seems to maintain a steady pace as if it has an endless supply of fuel right there in that little spot. where in normal brush fires it either spreads or if it doesn't spread then the fuel that it was burning right there at that one spot is consumed so in a normal fire you can't just keep burning in one little spot producing the same amount of smoke see that new plume coming up one little spot doesn't just keep burning it either spreads or consumes the fuel in that one little spot and goes out. In these kind of fires, one little spot can just keep burning and burning and burning. Don't know what's there, but I'll probably go across and check it out after work. But as you can see, whatever it is just keeps putting off another billow of smoke after another billow of smoke. All coming out of that one little spot and it's not spreading. So where is the extra smoke coming from? Where is the fuel that's creating that fire? Remember the good old days when I'd <laughs> drive and, and film and people would say how do you even still have a license I'm concerned about the permit issuing bureau not your merit and your actual ability to drive but 
the permit. How do you still have a permit issued by the authorities to decide whether or not you can drive? Well, that's meritocracy funneled through bureaucracy creates credentialism. And when you get rid of the bureaus and the credentials, you're left with a true meritocracy. That's what makes me an expert and the authority on the subject matter of plasma fire. And the average dumbass says, well, what, you think you know more than the fireman that holds a hose and squirts it in the direction that he's told? What, you think the fire chief's in on some sort of cover-up? As the authority and the expert on the subject matter, I suggest you listen instead of speak. So we got some cray-cray clouds going on over here too. But how is one fire that's only in that one little spot still going? Is it an endless supply of fuel? Is it a farmer that piled up some brush and he's just burning off some brush? Is it a good idea to spray water on a fire that has a basis of electricity, underground lightning? Those firefighters that I was educating at the scene of one of these plasma fires, I told them they may need some new technology to fight these new kind of fires that are unlike anything they've ever seen and I suggested a, mute, a video called pump up the base to douse the blaze where a couple college students demonstrate by pointing a base frequency from a speaker at a grease fire in a pan and it puts the fire out and I tell these firefighters they might want to check into some technology like that and run it past their fire captain that's what I mean when I say listen instead of speak all opinions are not created equal. My opinions have been based off four years of field research. So yeah, you might be able to sense a little bit of anger and hostility. The plasma fires alone are enough to provide a plausible, feasible, logical and rational explanation for why we saw COVID and why we're seeing Ukraine. Not only as a distraction, can you imagine the planning where someone says, uh, boss, I, I don't think it matters what we put on TV. If the trees are burning all around them from the inside, fires are starting simultaneously, 10, 20, and 100 at a time. It doesn't matter what we put on TV, they're going to notice. Yeah, I would have thought so too, until I saw it happening for four years and realized they don't notice. Like Tool said in their end of the world song, Anima, one great big festering neon distraction, I have a suggestion, it's to keep you all occupied. Learn to swim. That song's talking about the end of the world. Some say a comet will fall from the sky, followed by fault lines that cannot set still, followed by something else, followed by millions of dumbfounded dipshits, and some say the end is near. One great big festering neon distraction. I have a suggestion, it's to keep you all occupied. Plasma fire alone can explain why they would go to such great lengths for a globally coordinated orchestrated theatrical event like COVID, followed by Yes We Crane. So now it's been about 30 minutes, but we just keep seeing plumes of smoke come up from that same spot. If it was a brush pile being burned, the smoke would come up evenly, not in a plume followed a high and then a low and then a high and then a low. It would come off of the burning pile evenly. So I said last summer that this will be the summer that everyone finds out about plasma fire because it'll be so prevalent and everywhere that it, you won't be able to hide it anymore. Well, in a way I was right because there was more plasma fire last summer than ever before. This will be my fifth summer 
Last summer was my fourth summer, but the first time I had ever seen a live plasma fire and been able to film it. In fact, I filmed four live plasma fires last year, and this year we had the first winter fire season ever. In Paradise, Kansas, where those tornadoes ripped through, no one told you about the fires that coincided with those tornadoes. In Boulder, Colorado, with those fires, no one told you about the tornadoes that coincided with those fires. And now we have Carbon, Texas. And we have UV readings from MB3. He's back to giving UV readings again. Because they're higher than ever. So it kind of sucks to be the only one who knows about this four years later after having screamed from the rooftop. It wasn't important enough to anybody else to pay attention and to invest any of their time, effort, energy, and resources into an awareness campaign that actually matters. So now they get to suffer the consequences of their apathy, indifference, and willful ignorance. You think anyone would care about a cold if they knew about the plasma fires? You know, about a cough, a disease that's no more deadly than the regular flu? You think anyone would give a shit about any crane if they knew about this? Or you think it might readjust their priorities? How many people do you think you personally could have spared from getting the jab because after four years of watching this, clear and present danger all around them, they would see that clearly there is a coordinated orchestrated cover-up. The dome of silence has been lowered over this subject and no one's talking about it on TV. You know, all those authorities that are looking out for your best interest. When the same people come out and tell you you need to go get it, anyone who's been watching this for four years could not logically it is illogical. It is nearly impossible for them to watch this for four years and the deafening silence in the same media that then told them to go get it. And they say, oh, okay, I'll, I'll go get it. When they can see that there's a real clear and present danger that those same people are not saying anything about it would naturally cause them to lose trust and belief in those same authority figures who tell them we're all going to die from the cold. Sorry to be such a buzzkill. Here, we'll check out some cool clouds for a minute. Maybe. Those are pretty cool. Cool, man. It's like bonus gravy. It's like the fire's starting back up again. Why does the smoke surge and then lull, and then surge and then lull? One of the mysteries of these types of fires.